you know, we'll start off talking a little bit about last year, as I said, the challenging year. Pair scab, 21 infection periods through last spring, um, and really hard back to back to back to back. There was a period in mid September where I think probably a few guys got caught out, as well as in October, where it just kept going. And then obviously with the flooding and standing water through the orchard, all of a sudden it was just hard to get out there to cover up and everything just started to spiral. So early mid September, there's that nice picture over the words. Um, added difficulty with the flooding. You know, most orchards either had standing water or, or some flood water in there, so it was quite difficult. Where things got really bad, we've had that build up over the last couple of seasons. So Nick, Nick Pasira made the comment that you know, there's generally been primary infections over the last couple of seasons. You've got carryover inoculum, so we started off with a little problem. So 21 was quite wet. 22 was even wetter, and so we've got this build up, you know, exponential build up of, of inoculum and pressure for disease. Black spot for apples, 13 primary infections, probably less of an issue up here, but, but it does still happen. Um, got some good large releases of ASCO spores early, which helps with pressure, but it's still there. Um, and then brown rot and other fungi for other growers and that sort of thing. You know, wet and humid conditions make things difficult. With that humid condition, spray products might have been might not have been drying properly before events. So there's also that. Um, as I said, challenges, inoculum build up, more pressure, pretty straightforward. So you can kind of see where we're going to go as far as fixing things. Difficult to apply products, lots of rainfall. I can imagine there was quite a few guys with bog tractors. And then that flooding after that initial sort of establishment of disease in a few orchards saw the issue. And whilst we tend to think like this year was a little bit late, you know, there's the 30th of August getting quite a bit of movement in pairs. A lot of guys probably weren't quite onto it, I would say, with slowdown of oil and stuff, that first spray probably snuck a little bit later as people waited for product. Pretty basic, but if you get an early establishment, the pressure goes up and everything starts to hammer on. Um, and then you need to make tame cover through that summer period. We kept getting rain, so we had disease that just kept on rolling. So this is out of RIMPRO, so one of the models out there. Um, this one's available by Marcel. As you can see up through here, they've got a green tip at the 1st of September there, which is about a little bit later where that one was. But this period I've highlighted in pink, quite a lot of infections. And we look at the rainfall in the dark blue down here, it's really difficult to actually cover that. So if you've got a 25 mil rainfall event, most protectants have actually washed. You've got to get back on and possibly back on again in that period. So it was pushing um, the proverbial uphill a little bit. Flooding came in on that arrow. So if you already had an established population there, you're about three weeks later, you wouldn't start to see it. Pressure continued to rise and, and keep getting multiplied out. So a difficult year for spraying is probably the summary of the first half here. Um, it was hard, but it is what it is, I guess. So as far as what you've got to be thinking next year, if you've got a problem, you might have a problem. Even if you didn't have a problem, it's probably a good idea to be drawn and reduce your pressure. So keep it clean, reduce your inoculum levels. Urea in the post-harvest period is a good way to start to break down leaves. But don't, you don't want to go too early. Um, probably talking early, mid-May, if you're looking for that real breakdown period. Um, but if you're looking for more of the nutritional benefit, you might be looking a bit earlier at a lower rate. Copper chelate or other... Heavy metals, so zinc, iron will do it as well. Probably again that early mid-May. Phytotoxicity is a risk, so be careful when you're playing with fire. But if you need to drop leaves, that's an option to get things down faster. Once those leaves are on the ground, we're going to break them down faster as well. So you re onto the ground through the weed sprayer, options like that. And then probably the big one, if you've got severe pressure, looking to sweep and mulch. So leaf sweepers, not super common. Um, and then obviously targeting pruning earlier into the blocks that have a problem so you can get them cleaned up faster, get everything broken down earlier to reduce that, that spore load for next year. Mick gave me this picture. This is for the guys with mounted stuff, which is most. And then you've got quite a large mound. Something like this is an option just to get that sweep. So that's a sweeper. Drive through, mulch on the back, sweep on, mulch through, break up the leaves smaller, they break down faster, spore load drops. That's the idea there. Outside of breaking down inoculum, so reducing our pressures one strategy, we've also got to look at our sprays. 
getting them calibrated, serviced, everything working beautifully is awesome. Probably varying degrees of people doing this, but if you've got a problem, it's probably one of the first things to look at. But then also making it's it's right for the canopy you're trying to do. There's no point travelling at 12 k's an hour and only spraying the bottom half of the tree and pulling that spray down. If you're going to spray, you've got to get coverage. Um, that might mean if you can't get the spray to calibrate in that way or set up, getting the canopy optimised. If the trees are too tall or too dense, you're not getting adequate coverage. So either you need to adjust your coverage or adjust your canopy. It's a little bit of both. Um, if you do have bigger issues, addressing them. If you've got less susceptible to t tissue for a lesser period, you've got less chance of infections. But first and foremost, you've got to get that good coverage um, to match your canopy. So if you're spraying really large open trees versus a very dense um, tetralis, you've got to match that canopy with what you're actually trying to do. You've got to cover tissue with the protectors. And then the other side of it, which definitely some people got caught out on, do you need more sprays or operators? So really, and people will probably laugh, you want to be trying to be able to cover in a day. Um, I know it's, it's very difficult on the scale that a lot of operators are up here, but that period through September, if you couldn't cover in a day, really going to struggle. Getting onto it early, late dormant period, good coverage. So copper, you know, even Bordeaux is very sticky. It's a pain to mix, but, but worth the consideration. But protectants are going to be your foundation through that spring period as the new tissue comes. So start early, continue your cover, use the models. I know most of the retail guys, so Cordwells and uh, Nutrients and Elders, most of the tapping into models. So Talk to them, that's probably the first place to start if you had an issue, um, and then choose appropriate sprays for the conditions. If it's going to rain very heavily, something like a magazine product tends to wash off a little bit faster, so something else may be more appropriate. So some are more sticky, so stick around for a bit longer. And I just threw this one in there, the most expensive spray is the one that doesn't work. I know a lot of spray programs cost a lot of money, but the cost on having you know 40% of your crop lost to you know, scab or black spot or whatever else is much more expensive than another 60 bucks a hectare. But as far as kickbacks and curatives, you know, protectants number one, try to be covered as best you can. Things do come through. If you've missed it, you've got to get back on as soon as possible. Different chemistries have different periods to get it on within, but making sure we're also rotating. So don't be just hitting the same chemical over and over. You actually have a legal obligation to do that, but it's just poor form because if you keep going, um, we won't have that product in the future. So in summary, reduce the inoculum levels, sweep, mulch, post-harvest sprays, get the leaf broken down as fast as possible, check your sprayer coverage, calibrate your sprayer to your canopy, make sure you've got enough operators, and then get a plan in place. Which products you're going to use, when you'll use them, do you have enough spray pump capacity, can you get it done in time? Tree vigor, Canopy density, do you need to make any modifications and then get in the orchard from, from mid-August and, and start watching for susceptible tissue and getting that first spray on. If you've had an issue, it's very unlikely you'll completely nail it in the next spring. So you want to be almost right on top of it rather than being a bit lax. Mm -hmm.